my appearance, I've been working on the plane, I'm just a little bit dirty, but I thought I'd talk about um, the differences between um, a Garrett TPE331 and maybe a Pratt & Whitney PT6. Um, these are the two most common um, turboprop engines kind of in the world, and I haven't really found anyone who's done like a... YouTube clip about the differences, the, the major differences. I'm, I'm not an engineer, so you know, I'm not going to go in super deep. But the main difference basically is that the PT6 is what's called a free turbine, meaning that the hot turbine section uh, blows air onto turbine blades, who then drive the propeller. So uh, the combustion side and the compression side is its own little unit and it's separate from the drivetrain of the gearbox and uh, the propeller. On the TP331, they're all interconnected. So everything turns. When I turn the props like this, and I'll show you this soon, you can see that the compressor stage, the first compressor stage that you can view from here, is also turning. Now, that wouldn't happen on a Pratt & Whitney PT6. Now on a Pratt & Whitney, you can turn the prop all day long and it will never turn the compressor stage or the hot stage uh, of the turbine because they're just not in interconnected. So that's the major, major difference between these two. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about the drawbacks and advantages of the each system a little bit later. Another thing that's different between these two engines is that a PT6 is what's called a reverse flow engine, whereas this is more of a straight flow. Basically, the air comes in here on the Garrett, and it goes straight through the system and pops out on that side of the exhaust system. Whereas on a PT6, the air actually goes in in a duct and then get reversed, turned back into the hot part of the compressor and the combustion and all that and then it gets expelled on the side. And normally you see on PT6 and you see two uh, exhausts on each side. And that's when they kind of, that's the end of the engine actually. And then the exhausts get pointed backwards. So it's what's called a reverse flow turboprop. Whereas this is, I don't know if there's a name for this, but straight flow or non-reverse flow, I don't know. But this is more, Kind of logical in a way and it's better for the airstream not to turn around and come back on upon itself and kind of twist and turn so this is probably a little bit easier now there are drawbacks to this and the drawback is that the exhaust has to come out straight behind the engine so at the end at the end of the engine there's this bend in the exhaust and then it comes out here on the side on the turbo commander on the MU2, where the wing nacelle, or the engine nacelle, is actually under the wing, there's a straight, yes, just like a straight pipe, stove pipe right out into the back of the engine. Uh, on the Merlins, the exhaust is on top of the wing normally, at the trailing edge of the nacelle. One of the reasons why you tended to see Garrett's on twins mainly, because it was easier to construct and design the exhaust system. On singles, they never, now first of all, when the engines came, there weren't anything like turboprop singles, really, like not the PC-12 and the TBM that we have today. They really didn't, in that, kind of, that kind of type of aircraft didn't really exist then. The Garrett's are not really ideal for single engine uh, design aircraft because it's really hard to get the exhaust to come out in a good way when it's at the front of the nose, and you know, the front of the airplane. Uh, some have done it. You know, there's, a, there's an upgrade on the uh, Cessna Caravan to use Garrett's, and it's a beast. Like it's super, super quick and super efficient, and has a shitloads of power. But there's this big exhaust that comes out at the front of it, and it looks a little bit weird. So it's uh, they they tended to be on twins mainly uh, because it was just easier to design it that way. Another way to quickly tell. Uh, if an engine is a Garrett or a PD6, is this here, this area right here, it's, it's called a smile in, in, in Garrett speak, Honeywell speak. And um, you'll see these on all 
a TPE. They kind of have this conference. Sometimes this is on top, like it is on some of the Merlin engines, um, but it's basically the same thing. And it's always painted in this green color because this is the Garrett signature green that they did. Another way to tell is that the blades on a Garrett are in flat pitch when the engine's on. This is to allow the least amount of resistance on startup. You know, they're on the locks now, it's called blades are on the locks. On a PT6, you'll find that the blades are in, in the opposite of the way, but like a coarse pitch. That's because they, there's no need to spin the, the blades up quickly there. You know. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of each type of engine? Well, because this is all interconnected, like I say, you know, when you turn the starter over, you turn the, the compressor, turbine, and the prop over. So it needs a lot more power. So you can really, really drain the battery. And if you have a bad battery, uh, that won't spin the engine up as fast as you need. So you'll have a more likely to have a hot start or a start that's a bit um, close to over temping, you know. So that's one of the disadvantages of the Garrett. The PT6 doesn't have that problem because if you kind of spin up, it can start the, you know, the turbine stage kind of separate from, from the propeller in a way. Or the propeller comes in when the end, when this turbine stage is already up and running. So they need a lot less power and they're a lot quicker to start up. That said though, this engine, I don't know why, but the PT6, because maybe it has to do with some of the reverse airflow going back and forth, and because of the free turbine, it's just not as efficient. The Garrett will burn about 20% less fuel for the same speed, same horsepower. So these engines are, are much more fuel efficient. And you'll find that airplanes with really good range, like Turbo Commanders, Merlins, uh, Conquests, they tend to have uh, Garrett engines on them. You know, when you have PT6s, you can get long range, like the King Air 350 is a, is a, is a is a very good example of an extremely long range uh, turboprop. But they need a lot more fuel to be able to go the same distance as uh, some of these turbo commanders and Merlins. Especially the Merlin is impressive because it'll do almost 2,500 nautical miles on, on you know, a full tank, on a Merlin 3 at least. So it's very impressive. The carrots are also generally cheaper to maintain. And one of the reasons is that it has a much higher TBO, time between overall, compared to PT6. The PT6 has 3,600 hours. These normally come in 5,400 hours. Now, you have to do two hot section inspections on this, one every 1,800 hours, uh, whereas a, a PT6 only needs to do one hot section inspection. So, yeah, you have a little, that's a higher cost, for this, but it still works out cheaper per hour than it does on a PT6. Another thing is that the PT6 is today almost in a monopoly situation, so that Pratt & Whitney can basically charge whatever they want. Whereas the market for the Garrett's have, as the manufacturer's gone out of business, have, uh, have, um, have gone down, but the prices, which kind of keeps the prices in check a little bit. The Garrett's are also much quicker on your power response because everything is interconnected. You know, the prop and the gearbox is physically connected to uh, all the turbine blades. So when you put power on, the response time is much quicker. On a PT6, you might put power on, and it takes a little bit longer because that has to now blow air on to like a couple of turbine discs that will speed up. So it's a little bit less responsive anyway. Both the PT6 and the Garrett engines were designed in the 60s, and they kind of came out at the same time. And Garrett is no longer in business. Uh, they sold, I, I don't know who they sold to or who they got bought by. These engines are now manufactured by Honeywell. But everyone kind of still refers to them as Garrett engines. And yeah, it's just, just, just what it is. It's easier to say than TPE331, right? PT6 is kind of, that's good. You can say that in a nice way. T331 
TPE331. Eh, you know what I mean? It's just easier to call them again. I find. Well, that was a very bad explanation. I hope you at least got a little bit of information out of it, and hopefully you'll understand slightly the difference between them. I'm not an engineer, so I'm sorry for that. I'm also sorry for looking a mess, but I'm working on the plane. It's a day off. So. All right, hopefully see you soon. Bye.